When I was younger, I used to help my grandmother put on her pearls, the one with the rhinestone clasps. She'd have me help her pick out which perfume, which wig, and which fur coat she was gonna wear to go see live music in Seattle. My grandparents were always going to see live music in the central district of Seattle. Now they've passed, but I just have such incredible memories like this of them. Growing up, I was enchanted by the stories from the past. I was so proud to be connected to that history, to know that my city gave birth to and launched the music careers of music legacies. We're talking Jimi Hendrix, Quincy Jones, Kurt Cobain, Ernestine Anderson, Sir Mix-a-Lot, Diggable Planets, Kenny G, Macklemore, and way too many others to even name. Those stories are so special. These tales resonate a deep, rich rhythm, warmth, and wisdom within me. I'm gonna share one of those stories with you. A 98-year-old storyteller, elder in Seattle named Cecil Beatty, recently told me a story that transported me back to the past to a place called the Black and Tan, one of the most legendary jazz clubs. The Black and Tan was where legacies launched their careers. The music, the dancing, otherworldly. Mr. Cecil told me about a 15-year-old boy. He wasn't even old enough to drink, let alone get into the club, but he was addicted to this music. So he would peek through the hole of the back of the Black and Tan to witness those music legacies transform on stage. One night, a famous blind man who played the piano invited this 15-year-old boy to come up on stage. That was the night where Ray Charles and Quincy Jones played at the same piano. And that history is nothing short of pure magic. I see the same rich history in Atlanta and other cities worldwide. Musical geniuses that shaped music all over the world. They represent significant themes and milestones in our lives. And beyond the melody, there's invaluable, profound history, like the civil rights movement, priceless. Rich history steeped in every story, a testament to the enduring bond and connection that we have together, shared with us from our elders who are now our ancestors, also known as oral tradition. These neighborhoods that house these memories were such vibrant places, rich with community, heritage, culture, art, heritage, fashion, art, trailblazers, fashion, all rooted in a deep sense of appreciation for their history and their legacy. These stories and these experiences embody the essence of the connection that we all seek, a bond that's felt as time passes and we're losing access to these stories, but they deserve to be told. Like most people in life, I left home and in my adult life, I returned to my neighborhood so that I could show my children the community that housed their history. Upon arriving, I was in shock with what I saw. It was gone. There was no trace. The community and its rich history utterly vanished. All I could think to myself was, what's gonna happen to the history that took place here? How will future generations have access to it? How will the world know what took place in this geographic space? And who is left to tell these stories? I can't help but feel like in our race to build the latest and greatest, we are recklessly paving over history, paving over geographic spaces with profound memories, erasing the shared human experiences that have shaped the very fabric of our existence. And we're at a critical point where we are losing access. There's so many moments in history I wish I had access to. How will we ensure the transmission of these stories to future generations? How can we bridge the future to the past, ensuring a seamless continuity of sharing these invaluable stories and lessons across generations? I have an idea, a vision. I believe it's the solution. During a dual master's program in grad school, I forged a path, 
a method to immortalize our history and narratives into the future, naming it XR Preservation. A solution to preserve our history and our stories, indeed. Our capabilities now transcend mere storytelling. We now have the ability to pass this history down to future generations. So let's create history and recreate it and relive it and preserve it into the future. That's right. Preserving it with immersive technology, virtual, augmented, mixed realities, these tools allow us to recreate history. We can create immersive memories, immersive stories, interactive storytelling experiences, experiential learning, and immersive exhibits. Now, we can engage, experience, and even interact with history. We can peek through the hole of the back of the black and tan and see what Quincy Jones saw firsthand. Now, what moments would you want to teleport to? What memories would you want to explore that we no longer have access to? Maybe Bob Marley at the Roxbury or the Beatles early days in Liverpool? I want Goody Mob and Outcast to take me on an immersive tour of Atlanta. It'd be amazing to experience the neighborhoods through their rich history and memories. I want to relive those memories with them. You know what else I want? I want to experience the history of the civil rights movement and have Dr. Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King, and John Lewis teach it to me. I want to recreate and preserve the stories that Jewish people lost during the Holocaust. I want to document the history of the African diaspora, and I want to experience sports' greatest moments beyond 2D. I want access, and I want everyone to have the same access. Interactive learning history experiences in schools, airports, libraries, museums, government buildings, for residents and for tourists, on the Beltline, yes. With mixed reality, we can have simulated history in the real world, accessible within our reach right now. This is our moment to safeguard history with XR preservation paving the way. This is how we forge human connections globally through our history and our stories. The urgency is palpable. We are losing access daily. Our elders are departing. Heroes and trailblazers are passing away before we can collect this history. Archives are at risk and our memories are stored floating in a cloud, inaccessible. What ensues when access dwindles? Already we can observe what's happening. Erasing history places us on the brink of reiterating our greatest errors, our biggest mistakes. There are some mistakes I pray for us to never replicate. Let's use technology to breathe life into history and transform the power and future of storytelling. Priceless history exists in every culture, every race, every country, every city, every community, every company, every family, individuals all want to preserve and pass down their history to future generations. I mean, the truth is, we all want to inherit legacy. Some of us want to leave a legacy. So we need an overhaul of our music, our culture, our heritage, our stories, our memories, our art, our greatest accomplishments, the very essence of who we are and who we want to be, and in some cases, who we don't want to be. And now is the time. Before returning to grad school, I was in corporate for quite some time. How many of you know about that 80 hour a week life? In those spaces, I was always the only person that looked like me. The things I overheard, the things people said to me with no regard, I was the other. In response, I put a great sense of responsibility on myself to fit in. I found myself always apologizing for being different. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have a voice. And what's worse, I didn't feel I was allowed. I felt utterly insignificant. Today, as you can see, that's transformed. I have no more apologies to offer. I stand unapologetically. I will proclaim XR preservation from a mountaintop or any megaphone, 
anyone locking eyes with me will find my headset put on them. I have plugged in over 2,000 people into the future of unlimited possibilities. Equipped with a voice, I urge everyone to infuse the future of tech with your ideas, your perspectives, your diverse backgrounds, your lived experiences. This is not about sitting at a table with limited seats, no more tables. Rather a call for microphones to amplify our voices and our stories. You see, tapping into my life purpose is what's made me unapologetic. Unapologetic tech is about forging ahead unapologetically, unburdened by apologies, unbound by self-doubt in uncharted realms where technology and humanity intertwine in ways that are unapologetically transformative. I stand here before you today as a testament to the unyielding determination and the magic of unapologetic authenticity, where there are no more limitations, no more apologies. Unapologetic tech is a philosophy a radical departure from the conventional. It's where we fearlessly embrace disruption and we place in every line of code, every ecosystem and every innovation. Because it's not just about who's using the tech, it's also about who's building it. Unapologetic tech is an audacious approach to technology. It champions bold visions, it transcends societal norms and it fuels innovation. How? It's where engineers, designers, programmers, artists, creators from a myriad of backgrounds create solutions that resonate with the whole spectrum of humanity. It's when a poet collaborates with a programmer. It's when we synergize the expertise of coders with the insights of caregivers, teachers, artists, musicians, visionaries, and elders from all walks of life. Where tech becomes a vessel and we can craft our own reality. And the reality of unapologetic tech is, it's not always about upgrading hardware. It's about upgrading humanity. We've seen unapologetic tech in the past. Also from Seattle, Bill Gates, Paul Allen, the dot-com era, Amazon. Every generation has this revolutionary. Steve Jobs, individuals who dared to be different, who took the road less traveled, who reimagined an apologetic tech in the face of doubt and opposition. History has showcased this unapologetic authenticity. XR preservation extends to all of us an opportunity to achieve unapologetic tech, a chance to be a part of something far greater than ourselves, become better listeners, better teachers, better keepers of history, guardians of the past. We're not just preserving history. We're shaping the future by embracing our own unapologetic creativity. This is the dawn of a new era. It's a whole new generation of technology available today. An entirely new generation of people who are in an unapologetic pursuit to build that future. The road to innovation to Innovation and success does not just run through your boardrooms and R&D labs. If you want to fuel disruption, you have to welcome unapologetic tech into your ecosystem. It's birthed in diverse teams, inclusive environments, in spaces where unapologetic voices from every background, every aspiration, because all innovation starts with someone willing to unapologetically dream about the possibilities. And in the vast expanse of binary codes and algorithms, there is room for our dreams, our tears, and our aspirations. This journey doesn't belong to a chosen few. It belongs to us all. And in this realm, tech is not just a tool. It's our paintbrush, our compass, our kaleidoscope, and even our canvas. Are you willing to reach beyond your comfort zone, beyond your day-to-day -day routines with the same conversations with the same meetings and the same people in the same spaces? Are you ready to engage with people that are completely opposite of you and your interests? Are you going to ask the difficult questions? How can their skills bring a touch of humanity to tech? How can we infuse more unapologetic tech together?
building this solution, I definitely encountered a lot of naysayers who said I don't belong, who told me that that's not what technology is for, Yolanda. To them, I say thank you. To the skeptics, to the gatekeepers, to those who dared me to dream bigger, thank you. Thank you for every doubt, for every rejection, for everyone that said I don't fit in, thank you for the fuel, for pushing me beyond my limits. I am not a coder. I have not been traditionally trained in tech. And when I stopped apologizing for it, my unapologetic journey led to accolades, two master's degrees, an invitation to speak at Oculus headquarters, named in the top 100 women of the future, invited to Oculus Launchpad, named number one on the leadership board of Oculus Launchpad, and soon to be announced the most recent winner of Oculus Launchpad and a finalist for Pharrell Williams Black Ambition Award. And today, right now, I'm sharing my unyielding journey about XR preservation at my first TEDx Talks with you right here, right now, devoid of a single apology. But my accolades aren't symbols of just personal triumphs they're a beacon for everyone who has ever been told they don't fit the mold. They are proof that unapologetic persistence, the impossible is attainable. I am unapologetically standing before you today, committed to the concept of using emerging technology to preserve our stories from the past into the future so we never lose access again. Ladies and gentlemen, visionaries, all pronouns, tech enthusiasts, gamers, innovators, dreamers, women and men of the future, welcome to the future of unapologetic tech. I wanna welcome you to a vastly growing ecosystem of unapologetic creators, overlooked geniuses, programmers, artists, brilliant innovators, a world where we are paving a pathway that leads tech to embrace our genius, cultivate our fearless audacious ideas, and let our differences shine brightly. By doing so, we become the architects of innovation, the innovators of the future, and the champions of change. I cannot wait to share more of this unapologetic journey with you. In the meantime, I challenge you all to consider what unapologetic tech means to you too. Thank you.